said the other day that if we, if, if governments do better, I mean, I mean, if businesses do better, the deficit won't be fixed because the money will go overseas. Like he made this comment, and it seemed quite like to undermine a lot of this asset sales thing. And yet, the Labor Party didn't seem to really like. I'm, I didn't actually. See, I didn't see the comment you're talking yes. about. I mean, our policy on asset sales is pretty clear. You've seen it on all the billboards. There won't be any asset sales. And the National Party's belief that somehow or other they can deal with debt by their one-off fire sale of, of New Zealand's assets is wrong. It's bad economics. It's bad for New Zealand. So our position is very clear on asset sales. Yeah, it was just Billings just kind of admitted that. In a, well, in a way, I mean, exactly. Way. It's completely flawed. It's a totally flawed piece of logic from Bill English. These are assets built up by New Zealanders over years and years and years. We already own them. He wants to sell them back off to people. It's flawed. Also, there's another question in the Twitter sphere about um, what, what, how do you think the Labour Party has changed? Like, what's the biggest difference between this Labour Party and the Helen Clark Labour Party? Uh, I think probably the, the thing that strikes me is some of the ways that we're communicating with the public. Um, um, Clear currents here and the, and the growth of our Red Alert and the way that we are being, I think, a lot more open with the public about how we're coming up with policy, how we're communicating with people. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's one of the really big changes since the last government. The other thing is, uh, in the policy sphere, is that when you do go out of government, the only good thing about being in opposition is that you get time to relook at your, your policies. And in the economic policy area, we've taken that seriously. So we've changed monetary policy. We're changing the rules around government procurement so that it favours um, Kiwi companies and Kiwi jobs. They weren't things that the last government um, made, a, made a focus of. We are because we live in different times. Mm. We've had massive global financial crisis. Mm. New Zealand actually does need to do things differently. So in a policy sense, we're also, you know, the fundamental things the Labour Party believes in are still there, but we, we do need to tweak that policy. I, I agree that some of those changes are quite significant. Do you think there's sort of a, a shift to the left occurring internationally in terms of the policy framework and um, of this idea that capitalism isn't as um, robust and um, able to cope in a neoliberal framework as before? Well, I just think when you look at the global financial crisis and the ongoing issues with, with recession right around the, world, the developed world, uh, it's clear we can't keep doing things the same way we've been doing them. And so that's what, from a New Zealand perspective, the Labour Party has said, yeah. you know, we need monetary policy that actually supports our exporters. Okay. We need procurement policy that supports our, our, our firms in New Zealand. So, yeah, we have to do stuff differently. Okay. At that global level, yeah, I, th I think some of the same questions are being asked by people, and those answers um, won't necessarily come yeah. from New Zealand, but we should be part of yeah. finding them. Because you're, you're firmly on the left of the Labour Party, on the caucus especially, I would I have thought. I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> no factions in the Labour Party, No, they're not. No. But, um, you know, we've got all these interesting things happening uh, um, globally at the moment, like the Occupy Wall Street mm. uh, movement, which, you know, apparently I think there's um, some similar things happening in New Zealand tomorrow in that regard. Um, how does the Labour Party, or how do you view these things? You must be pretty um, sympathetic or in solidarity with those I've got a lot of sympathy with, with the ideas that are behind the Occupy Wall Street movement. When you think about the levels of inequality yeah. in the US, they're yeah. extraordinary. We have, in, we have a lot of inequality in New Zealand, and it, it's, it's an issue we've got to face up to when the government gives tax cuts, which mean that 40% of, of the benefit goes to the top 10%. Mm. We, so, that's going to increase inequality. So those issues of inequality are probably the biggest social issues of our time. And, I take that to be what lies behind okay. the Occupy so, Wall Street. So movement. do you think there'll be Labour MPs going to these I don't know. tomorrow? I, I don't Yourself? know there will be. No, I, I, can't, get, I can't get there. But um, I, I definitely understand one of the ideas that lie behind There's it. There's a question from the audience. Okay, question. Um, Cameron, I'm just wondering um, how do you think that we can reconcile like, economic growth with reducing carbon emissions, especially in the agricultural and transport sectors? Oh, I, I think we have to, is the answer. Um, the way that we do it is to, is to look for more sustainable forms of, of energy production and of transport. That means obviously you know, prior, prioritising renewable energy and, and making sure that we, we make that um, you know, effectively 100% of the mix for, for, for um, New Zealand in terms of electricity and hopefully more as we go on in terms of wider production. Um, we need to make sure we apply the best ideas and science that we've got to, to our agricultural sector. But then we've also got to diversify our economy as well. And we can't be a one-trick pony around, as, as I think Gareth Morgan calls it, producing protein for the world. You know, we've actually got to have more than that. Um, that's why I, you know, Labor believes in investing in, in, in R&D and skills, because we've got to encourage the people who will do that. So it is about saying, how can we 
lower the carbon intensity of our of our agricultural production, but it's also about creating new it's, industry too. So it's a hard question. Is, what, what do you think of the answer? Is that sort of um, is that convincing? Um, well, it's, it's, you know, it's easy to be non-specific, but I mean, you can't you know, say, oh, I think this is, you're not an inventor, so you can't say. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, yeah. And I'm, what I am as though is a politician who <coughs> recognises that we've got to get um, the policy settings right to enable that. Simple thing. Um, research and development tax credits. We've actually got to encourage the talent that we've got in New Zealand to work on these kinds of issues. How do we create a low carbon economy? We aren't going to do that by taking money out of research and development, which is what the current government's done. What about the fact that the national government like, pushed back the exclusion of you know, the agricultural sector and the yeah. transport sector even further? Did the, the Labour government bring it? Yeah, well, we're, that is our policy, is to bring the agriculture in in 2013 into uh, the ETS, and, and we do need to do that. We've got to take it seriously. OK, we should see if there's any other questions from the Twitter sphere. Yep, there's, there's one along the lines of, um, it was phrased quite well last week, if you, could, if you were trapped in a lift with any member <laughs> of a party other than your own, who would it be and why? Not a member of any other party. I tell you what it would be, it's, it would be actually Tony Ryle because then he would have to answer my questions about health <laughs> rather than avoiding them. If we were trapped for long enough, there's no way he could keep saying nothing to my questions. OK. Well, well, what's the best thing this, this government's done, this current government? What is the best thing that this current government's done? Um, passing the bill just before we finished Parliament to mean that people who work um, and what's called the so-called sleepover case. Okay. But people who actually work that's, overnight that's what, get paid the minimum yeah. wage. That's what Catherine Dallas Hunty said last week too. So what about worst? Oh, it's really, oh, really hard to say. There's so many. Yeah, yeah. it is. Oh, the right. tax cuts and the overall economic approach. At a time when New Zealand needed to be investing in people and investing in jobs, they gave tax cuts weighted to those who needed it the least. Okay, quick question about law and order. How would you rate the last Labour government on how well they performed in the, that sort of policy area? No, say out of 10. Would you give, oh, you know, going back to your student days, A plus, <laughs> B minus, C? Oh, probably a B. Um, I think the, we could have done more around issues of rehabilitation and reintegration okay. of, of, of prisoners. And the current government? Oh, around the four or five area. I Which think Judith Collins is... C? Uh, yeah, yeah, at least C, C minus. <laughs> uh, okay. So a, a future Labour government would reduce, say, imprisonment numbers considerably. Oh, you, hope, you guys, you guys doubled them. I certainly hope we would. I mean, for me personally, it's a, you know, it's a major issue. I think that we and embarrassing to... that the last Labour government oh, doubled the prison population. I don't, I don't get embarrassed about things like that. I know what I believe. Well, politi I don't mean personally yeah, no, no, embarrassing, but, but you asked me what we do, and yeah. I know what I believe, and yeah. that is that that if we don't focus on rehabilitation and reintegration of prisoners, then all we do is create people who will just continue in the criminal justice system. We actually need to, comp in my personal view, comp completely relook at the criminal justice system and focus on preventing crime and preventing people from recommitting crime. OK, now Helen Clark's come up a, a few times here, or at least the last government. Um, I just wanted to ask, nice you know... Nice segue, Bryce. Yes, uh, well, not very good, is it? <laughs> but um, uh, I just wanted to you know people speculate all the time about the, the control of Helen Clark. Um, and, I, I, you know, you worked closely with her. I, I just wondered if uh, you could um, give us any insights into how that went. But all oh, particularly, what, what directives did she send in her text message this morning <laughs> yeah, uh, when no. she knew you no were coming text, on vote chat? No, yeah, exactly. She said, get that Bryce Edwards and tell him no. No, uh, che no text from Helen this morning. Um, I, I stay in touch with Helen because I regard her as a friend. Yeah. yeah. By text? Uh, no, not really, by email mostly. But she's all, I don't know if you saw the other day, she did a, a UNDP Twitter event and it had million. I can't remember the number, but millions of, of people involved, well, millions of hits anyway. So um, yeah, she's embracing the technology too. Okay, so how was she to work for? Great, really great. I mean, as, as you can imagine, she was a person who, uh, who worked hard and, and didn't um, suffer falls and, and I really enjoyed working okay. in that environment. Choice, you have to make a choice here. Uh, best Prime Minister, Helen Clark or David Longy? Best Prime Minister was Helen Clark. Okay. Now, just to wrap up, we'll just see if you can give us some uh, election tips, how you think things are going to go. Uh, is, is Peters going to be back, Winston Peters? It's so, it's, you, it's so tempting to say no because he doesn't look like he's registering, but yeah. I reckon the first rule of New Zealand politics should be never rule out Winston Peters. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, what's going to happen with the ACT Party? Oh, I, I still think probably John Banks will win Epsom, um, but that's gonna, that could be really interesting if National decide to really go out against him, then obviously he won't. If he does win Epsom, I predict they'll only bring maybe one 
possibly two people in with them. Okay. Uh, the Greens, are they going to finally get over 10%? Don't know. I mean, they're, they're obviously polling better. None of us um, know, but yeah. you're, 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 you know, go out there on a limb and give no, us some... Uh, no, um... I don't do that, Bryce. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think the Greens will, will do better than they did last time, yeah. OK. Um, what's going to happen with the Murray Party? My, I think the Māori seats will be really one of the most mm. interesting things on election night. Uh, my pick is they'll be down to two or three MPs. OK. So you're picking that Sharples could lose? He's one of the possibility ones. Yeah. Um, I'm really confident about uh, Reno Tulukatni yeah. and Te Tai Tonga. Um, yeah. I'll be really interested to see what happens with Annette Sykes running for the Mana Party in Wairiki. You, you really think she's got a chance? Uh, well, I think, what well, I think it'll be interesting is what the three-way race yes, will become between Māori, Labour and Mana. Okay, yeah. so what will happen with Mana both in the election and sort of longer term? Because it's an interesting it development. It is an interesting one. Um, Hone, um, will, I'm sure, will be confident about um, Taitokarao, but I sit next to him now in Parliament, oh, and wow. I can tell you that uh, when that poll came out the other day, he was uh, he was he's he was worried. So yeah. that, that's another one to keep watching. The big the big um, wild card there is that the Māori Party have actually chosen the person they should have chosen yes. in, in the by-election, and um, that's going to make a big difference in that in that, that too. That, that's right. Actually, why won't you guys? work with Mana Party after the next election. I mean, Phil Goff's ruled it out, saying... He's, that ru he's ruled out a coalition, and I don't yeah. think Hone is a coalition kind of guy. But, but I'm, quite sure, I'm quite sure if Hone's in Parliament that there will be, he would be voting more often than not with the Labour Party. Yeah, but do you think, you know, is it because he's too left-wing? Is he too um, I think Murray nationalist? Is he no, I think, it, I think it's... Uh, when you're looking at... I mean, the, the questions Phil's been asked are about coalitions. And when yeah. you're looking at coalitions, you need to know that you're going to be able to have a long-term, constructive relationship. And I just don't think Hune so, would... Hune's not a coalition kind of guy. So effectively he wouldn't you're go for it. In a certain scenario, you'd prefer National to be able to put together a coalition... No, of course I'm not if, saying that. If, if it meant that you were reliant on Hone Harawera, you no. would rule him out. He no, wouldn't, but right. I, I think if there are was... lots of ways of working with Hone Harawera that are not part of a coalition, are not, that are not a formal okay. coalition. But you don't want his vote? No, I'm Pardon. sure, as I said before, he will vote with the Labour Party more often than not. OK. The big one, I guess, is Labour and National. Um, they're on, what, 58% in some polls, National. Any chance of them hitting 50% in the final results? Oh, my prediction is they'll be under 50%. Yeah, but you think there's no chance they'll get over 50? Uh, no, I mean, I just don't think, that, I don't think that will sustain, and I don't yeah. think it's even real at the moment. OK. What would be a total disaster for Labour? <laughs> and what number would you say would be a disaster? If, if, I mean, Labour could get 38% and could be in government. That would be great That'd for be you great. guys. 26%, that would be a disaster, wouldn't it? Well, it certainly wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think we'll do much better than that. OK. And Wellington Central? Um, is that wood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll increase your majority? I hope so, yeah. yeah. You're confident in that? Yeah. Okay. I'm optimistic. Optimistic. Okay, thanks, Grant. Um, thanks for coming along. Thanks, Bryce.